Now Hartman takes a shot as arm was hit, and this pass is intercepted by Quinton Reese for Liberty. Running back is Lewis. He'll take it, he'll score. Touchdown, Liberty. Third down throw for Bennett. Still Bennett. Back in the end zone, touchdown. Kyle up on third and 18, another high snap. DeZero is broke down and absolutely put into the ground by Steven Sinks, the fifth. Bennett on the run, up for grabs. There's a fight for the ball, it's a touchdown. Hey, it's a broken tackle again, and Dave Day Hunter has one man to beat, and he just beat him. Dave Day Hunter, end zone Hunter, touchdown Liberty. 80 yards. The 2023 Conference USA Football Kickoff Show rolls on. Next team in the house, Liberty. Final record in 2022 with 8 and 5. See the points scored versus allowed. Making the transition now into Conference USA. Key returners on offense and on defense. They start the season September 2nd against Bowling Green. We welcome in head coach Jamie Chadwell. First season here at Liberty coming over from Coastal Carolina along, alongside Xavier Gadlin, senior offensive lineman, and Quinton Reese, senior safety guys. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Looking sharp also. They look good, don't they? Coordinating the outfits. We did. Planned it a little bit. Yeah? Planned a little bit. All right, we're going to get into that a little bit. All right, coach, tell me about this move coming over to Liberty. What we had so much success at Coastal what went into the decision to make the change coming over here to Liberty? Well, it wasn't an easy one uh, by any means, but uh, when you have a, a university that's committed to, uh, you know, the players beyond the football field, you know, our mission at, at Liberty is training champions for Christ and uh, being a follower and a believer in Jesus. That was important to me, being a part of that environment. And then secondly, you don't often get a chance to be a part of something on the ground floor. This is our first year in, in FBS as far as being a part of a conference. And as a coach, as players, you get a chance to, to lay a foundation and leave a legacy that everybody has to try to live up to going forward. And to have that opportunity uh, as a coach uh, was hard to pass up and, and uh, decided to be here and representing Liberty. What changes for Liberty now being in a conference and what have you tried to tell the players to be, in order to get ready for conference play? You know, I think the biggest difference is, uh, you know, being, being in a conference every week is vitally important because you're trying to earn that conference championship game. On top of that, uh, if you're the best, uh, uh, you know, in, in the country at, at your level, then you have a chance to earn the New Year's Six and ultimately next year the CFP. So each week is vitally important. And when uh, you're an independent, you know, you can, you're playing great teams every week, but maybe you decide, hey, I'm going to get up for this team and not get up for this team. We can beat this team based off the team we beat. You don't happen in a conference. Everybody's playing for something important. And just that understanding of what it takes weekly to do that. Uh, and uh, that's been really my message from the beginning is being in a conference is different, unique. We have to prepare for that. And uh, our, our two players here have done a great job of trying to uh, frame that in our locker room to let get guys understand that. I don't know if they realize it yet until we get out there and, and start doing it, but uh, it's a big deal for us and we're thankful to be a part of Conference USA. Something that's certainly impressive about Liberty is just the facilities and the commitment to the athletics mm -hmm. that you have. When you first stepped on campus, what was your initial impression? And then when you saw the roster, what are some of the things you've been working on this offseason? Well, we do. We are blessed to have an administration that uh, cares about uh, not only football, but all our athletic programs and has, has put the resources we do have there to help our players have everything they need uh, to maximize their their ability that God's given them, and so uh, you know when you when you see the place, not only the athletics, is really just the campus in general. You're blown away. It's a beautiful beautiful campus there on the mountain, and um, and thankful for the things we do have. Uh, I think your challenge as a coach is uh, those don't matter. I've been at plenty of places where we've had success. We didn't have near the stuff that we have there. And so what matters is what we do with what we have. And that's been really my message is that we're not going we're not going to rely on on uh, you know chariots and horses. We're not going to rely on those things. We got to rely on the things that we can control, and that's playing for each other, connecting with each other, uh, and wanting our teammates joy just as much as we want our own. That's how we're going to build our program, uh, and and having those things that can help our players maximize is great. Um, but we want to connect uh, beyond um, material things. Uh, we want to have a play and compete for a purpose, and that, that's to be a brotherhood, and, and, and that's what we're working on. Take me through their offense. What have you brought from Coastal? What kind of system are you going to run now at Liberty? It'll be very similar. You know, I, I don't know how everybody classify it, spread option, whatever it may be. We're going to try to get our guys the, the ball in, in, in space. Uh, our playmakers, whether that's them touch it, whether that's RPOs, whether that's uh, dropping back, whether that's pitching it to them, whatever it may be. 
but we want to have a uh, an offense that's known that can be physical up front. I think we have a chance. We've got a really good offensive line and these guys have experience, and we're going to try to control the clock and and uh, limit limit the opportunities our defense is on the field and hopefully score enough points to win a lot of games. Quarterback-wise, you have a lot of quarterbacks in that quarterback room. What is that competition like heading into the season? It's wide open. We've got some good players there with good talent, and uh, they've got to continue to compete. They've done a great job since spring through summer, and and uh, the person that ends up winning that job will be the one that we trust to go out and make the best decisions with the football. Defensively now, when you look at the roster, what stands out for you? Well, we've got, you know, we lost a lot of experience from back there, but I, I like I like the guys that we do have returning. They're, they're good leaders. They love they love liberty. They, they love what it stands for. Uh, and we've got some hungry guys that have an opportunity to prove themselves. Maybe hadn't played as much as they, they, they wanted to, but now they get that chance. And I think we've got a great hunger right now on uh, our defensive side of the ball. All right, let's bring in your guys who are here. We start with defense. Quentin Reef, senior safety. Had so much success in your career, but like Coach said, you lose a lot of players from last season. As the leader, what's been your role this offseason? Uh, just make sure the guys understand that we got to focus on what's important now and not focus on the past or the future. Make sure we take the little things day by day and do what we got to do every day to make sure that we're set up later on in the season. What does that look like? What are some of the things tangibly on the field that you've worked on? Uh, just staying vocal, doing the little things like the extra work or coming having all the guys meet for extra films, just a small, tedious task that maybe are sometimes overlooked. We make sure we handle those on the regular. Is there a unit on defense that stood out so far in the offseason? Uh, I'm a safety, so of course I'm going to say safeties. I feel like we got <laughs> a lot of dogs in our room who are going to compete at a high level, and I'm very excited to see where we go this season. Coming into Conference USA, you now have an opportunity to compete for a conference championship. It'll be, you'll play everyone in the league. What do you feel about that now having this new opportunity? It's awesome, though. It's, it's great competition. It's going to bring the best out of all, everyone for real. So we're going to be challenged, but we're going to definitely see what we're made of this season. You guys coordinated. I like this. Oh, yeah. Who's, whose idea was this? It was kind of mutual. Yeah. I mean, we talked about the, I mean, I don't know if y'all saw the, but we had the baseball jerseys when we got on the plane to come here. Okay. And then we talked about, you know, wearing the blue and the black yeah. just to match it a little bit. And just, I, I like the idea of coordination so we could come in, like, as a unit. It's pretty cool. Like Xavier Gadlin, senior offensive lineman. You are a sharp guy, and you also are a thespian, correct? Yes, I mean, sir. you have a little acting. Tell me about not just your football life, but you participated in some theater during school, right? Yes, sir. Um, I started doing theater around my sophomore year. I took a class with a lady, Michelle Miller Dill, who was teaching history musical theater, and the room happened to have a piano in it. So I was playing piano and singing one day, and she came by and heard me, asked me if I wanted to take voice lessons. Voice lessons led to auditioning, which led to me getting involved. And it's been one of the things that I've become more passionate about. I've always been a performer. I didn't really know it when I was in college, but everybody around me did. Um, but then being able to get involved in something like that was just really cool because you get to see how it mirrors football. I don't think people understand the time, the dedication, and how meticulous and tedious things can be in that world. And also, the idea of working as a unit is something that mirrors very well as well. So the last play you were in on campus, was it Romeo and Juliet? It was, yeah. What was your role? I played the apothecary, and I was a royal guard. Yeah? I was there. He killed it. He was there. <laughs> how much prep goes into that? A lot of prep because it's a lot of people think it's just learning lines and going out on stage, but it's how do my lines fit with what's going on in the story and how do they fit with what somebody else is saying? How does my line, how does my scene fit within the entire story itself? And then there's the technical stuff like lighting, blocking, sound design, set design, things of that nature that like people just don't understand how much really goes into it until you get to go behind the scenes and be involved in it. It's like I would have never guessed that we had to do that, but that's just something that comes a part of it. Anything you've learned from being in theater that transfers to the football field? Your relationship with people is very directly tied to how much you can actually help them. Um, the theater world is where I learned to be very empathetic and very gracious and accepting with people from all walks of life. And that's something that serves really well in football because we're all from different backgrounds but working towards the same goal. And taking that from theater and applying it to football is something that I feel like has made me a better leader because now I, I've developed relationships with guys that I may not have had before, and that only serves me well to, in order to be a blessing and help them. Coach, that's deep stuff right there. Are yeah, you going to yeah, make your other guys I mean, I, I didn't understand half of what he was saying right there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, he's, uh, as you can see, uh, both of them, but he's, uh, he's an excellent player on the field, but he's tremend tremendous person off of it. And, uh, I was fortunate to be able to see him in, in the play there, and, uh, and uh, he, he did a fantastic job. And he'll end up being uh, doing uh, unbelievable things beyond the football field. I think he'll continue to play for a while, but he'll, whenever he's done playing, uh, he'll make an impact uh, in the community, which is awesome.
So you've had to connect with a lot of new guys on offense. What, what have you liked so far from your offense that you've seen so far? I think we have because I mean everything is new that we're learning right now and the system is a little different than what we've done before but we I mean not to be cliche but we kept striking the stone it's something that we coach Chadwell brought over and that we've been talking about a lot but it's just the ability just to keep going no matter what's faced in front of you so I think that's one thing I've seen a lot from the offense is just some things may not work one day but you know keep striking keep doing it keep working it and we'll see if we can get better at the next day Quentin you also do a lot of cool stuff off the field including your last name you were included in an NIL deal last year with Reese's Pieces. How did that come about, and what was the best perk of that deal? They actually contacted me on Instagram, and there was like, I think, 12 players across the country with the last name Reese, so it was a blessing, because my last name is Reese alone. But I got a lot of candy, gave it to a lot of coaches, and I also got blessed with a chain and a nice little jacket, but it was awesome to even be involved in that campaign. Nice, nice. Any NIL deals in the work? Anything you want to pitch out there? Uh, Castle Flex. If you're looking for a stretch device and you need it, Look up Castle Flex on Instagram. It's all you need. T top athletes use it. Everyone uses it. Attaboy, Q. You guys got some sharp guys. Yeah, they are. They are. I don't know why I'm coaching them. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and so, but they, they, they have been, uh, they've been tremendous. And, and uh, it's challenging when you take over a program and, and these two have, have bought in completely from, from, the, from day one. That doesn't happen a lot. Uh, they trusted us with what we're doing and they believe in, you know, in our mission, what we're trying to get accomplished. And I'm thankful to be able to coach them. And, um, and looking forward to seeing them play this year. Nice. All right, let's take us through the uh, preseason watch list for your Liberty players. Take me through all the guys and what they've meant to your squad. Well, I don't know tons about them because I haven't played, but I, I can say Noah, Noah has been a great leader for us in the receiver room and, and just unbelievable attitude. He's uh, working on his masters. Obviously, Xavier here, he'll be, he'll be in Hollywood doing something after football's done. Kendi's a great D Lima for us. Uh, has played played since a freshman. It's outstanding. Obviously, Q Reese didn't give me any candy. I'm a little disappointed there. And then Nick's uh, Nick's uh, you know been a, a kicker for us. Uh, Nick's uh, one of those guys that uh, tries to do crazy stuff. Broke his collarbone for being uh, being not very wise this summer. But he's he's back ready to rock and roll. For a new coach, you know your guys down. You spent some time with your players. Well, we got We got to. If we're going to talk about investing, you know, into their lives and being and being part of it, we got to learn a little bit about them and try to connect with them. And, and our staff is, I think, is done. And I think they'll echo that. We've done a really good job of, of trying to connect and using our CPR time to get to know people on and off the field. Yeah. CPR time. Explain what that is and what it's meant for you guys as players. Uh, it's coach player relationship building. So basically we just, you don't got to talk about football. It could just be about your life or what's going on at back home. But it's just building that relationship with your coach and just knowing he has your back and vice versa. Yeah, and it's not only with your position coaches. People from outside of your position could be opposite sides of the ball. But it's just the idea that the more we can learn about each other, just like I was saying earlier, the more relationship you have with somebody, the, the easier it is for you to help them because you know what's going on back home. You know what their situation is like, whether they're on campus, off campus, where they're from, how their family's doing, things like that. And it only it helps us to grow closer. Best conversation you had with a non-coach that you deal with on a daily basis? Me and Coach Corn actually talked about my theater career quite extensively for a while because he didn't know what I was doing um, or like how long I had been doing it. So I got to walk him through like my entire story, how I got involved in that and the things I've been able to do. So that was pretty cool. I like it. I like it. All right, let's talk a little schedule. Coach, we're going to put your schedule up on the screen. Walk us through week one and take us through your games this season. Well, you know, obviously we're playing Bowling Green, who had a uh, you know really nice year last year uh, in the MAC and. Um, you know, coming from coming from a, a great respected uh, conference there, and then we get right into conference play in week two, and then we got another MAC opponent, and then right into conference play and finish with, uh, you know, a rival in the state there in the last week over to Men and then UMass, and then finish obviously with a great UTEP team. So it's a it's a great schedule because we're playing a, a lot of similar teams like us, uh, and then we have the opportunity for the for the conference. Uh, the main thing you know that we're going to focus on is not necessarily who's up there; it's really us and what we have to do. You know, as we're learning our team. Uh, I know uh, a decent amount about us, but I don't know how we respond game week, how we respond in a fall camp, how we're going to respond with adversity. We're going to learn that through each other. They, they don't know how we are during a fall camp, you know, and how we are week to week. And so uh, that's a challenging schedule that will allow us to see where we're at and where we need to get to if we're going to win this league ultimately and put ourselves in that. And that's what we want to do. Um, and I know our guys are excited about having not only challenging teams, but now uh, playing teams where we play playing every year and building rivalries. When you're an independent, you might have some rivalries that are perceived like Virginia Tech right down the road and some of those. 
but now we're going to have every year our, our, our fans and are going to be able to see people coming into to, to Lynchburg and, and I know our team's excited about building rivalries and to build rivalries you got to win some games. I like it. In the off season, am I invited to your next play? Absolutely. Oh, let's Come do on. this. I'll give you some tickets. Might be on you Broadway. You never know. Ooh, Could be. Let's go to New York. Let's get it done. Yeah. Off Broadway, starting out. Then, uh, <laughs> you got to workshop. You got to work it. Up. You got to workshop it. Yeah. First year. Good luck. Thank you very much. Welcome to Conference USA. Appreciate that.